The RMS Queen Mary, like many ships of her era, had dog kennels for the lucky canines that traveled with their owners. Ocean liners like the Queen Mary were built to ferry passengers across the North Atlantic. Some people were traveling on important business, and others were migrants, looking to create a new life in another part of the world. This meant that, on occasion, a dog or two may need to travel with them, and these fabulous grand liners, which competed for top luxury, usually offered a place to house the pets, since they were not allowed to stay with the owners while on board the ship. Titanic's dogs have been a popular topic on YouTube, but let's switch the conversation to the Queen Mary, which at the time of her retirement in 1967 was the most famous ship in the world. The Mary's dog kennels were located on the port side of the sports deck, just forward of the middle funnel. The room measured 30 feet long by 15 feet wide, which is about 42 square meters of floor space. There are no photos of the interior as it existed, but this photograph of the dog kennel aboard SS Normandy might give you an idea of what to expect. Nothing more than rows of kennels with a drinking basin for the dogs when they are let out of their crates. The Queen Mary won the Blue Rib End in 1938, making her officially the fastest ocean liner in the world for a total of 14 years. That meant she could sail from Southampton, England, to New York in the United States in just under four days. Obviously, you can't keep pets cooped up in a tiny cage for the entirety of the voyage, so for that purpose, Cunard Line employed their young bellboys to walk the dogs in an adjacent outdoor exercise enclosure. This area measured about 80 feet long and was fenced in for the safety of the dogs, and this is where the pets could relieve themselves. The bellboys who walked the dogs were often tipped very well. The owners themselves could visit their pets during normal daytime hours simply by accessing a staircase that led up to the kennels from the sun deck below. From what I've read, the animals were treated and fed very well, but the details of what they ate or what activities they partook in are very fuzzy. One of the fascinating details of the dog kennel was the fact that before the ship had its maiden voyage, the British royal family visited the Queen Mary. The ship's namesake, Queen Mary the Queen Mother of King Edward VIII, presented the ship with her royal standard, and in turn, Cunard revealed a marble bas-relief medallion of Queen Mary. King Edward VIII then toured the ship, and when he visited the dog kennels, he remarked, and not even a lamp post. Soon after that, Cunard had a lamp post installed. On a side note, Queen Elizabeth II was also present on this day to tour the ship, except she was merely a young princess, having a jolly good time on the slide in the first-class children's nursery with her sister, Princess Margaret. The slide was later named the Royal Slide. The kennels were not just for dogs, but for other pets, like cats, However, on the ship's maiden voyage in May of 1936, the kennels were also home to six chickens belonging to actress Frances Day. Miss Day insisted that she eat the freshly laid eggs from her chickens every morning of the voyage, despite the fact that the ship was fully loaded in Southampton with 50,000 fresh eggs. Cunard was always known for its accommodating luxury, and indeed, Miss Day got to eat her freshly laid eggs. Over the years, the kennels would house the beloved pets of the rich and famous. Actress Elizabeth Taylor was a frequent passenger aboard the Queen Mary, and her dogs certainly traveled with her, as well as the pugs of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, although the royals were allowed to bring their dogs with them into their stateroom suite, which is something no other passenger was ever allowed. One of the more interesting stories is that of Charles Lindbergh, the famous inventor and aviator. In March of 1932, Charles's son was kidnapped and murdered by a man named Bruno Richard Hopman. After Hopman was convicted in 1935, Charles Lindbergh and his family were overwhelmed by the press attention and moved to Europe. Lindbergh's dogs followed after them in 1936 on a voyage aboard RMS Queen Mary. Charles wrote to his mother that he was afraid his dogs have not appreciated the honor of being passengers aboard the Queen Mary. The dog kennels, besides hosting the pets of the rich and famous, had otherwise an uneventful history for the remainder of the Mary's days at sea. 
But the Mary's kennels served as inspiration for the dog kennels aboard the Queen Mary II, the ship that was launched in 2003. The Queen Mary II is the last true ocean liner still in service and the largest one ever constructed. She is specifically built to ferry passengers across the sometimes dangerous North Atlantic, no matter how rough the weather is. And she is capable of doing it at speeds no cruise ship can dream of surpassing. Her dog kennels include a lamppost and fire hydrant for the dogs to relieve themselves. And much like on the original Queen Mary, the pets get walked by bellboys, have plenty of space to exercise, and are granted visiting hours with their owners. When the original RMS Queen Mary retired in 1967 and sailed to Long Beach, the city had experts determine the use of the ship as a hotel, museum, and convention center. The recommendation was that the city try to preserve most of the ship. They even recommended the placement of utility closets so that it wouldn't disrupt the historical importance of the ship's spaces. Well, unfortunately, at the time, the ship was a project of the then city manager, John Mansell. Mansell famously did not follow the recommendations set forth by the consultants, and the result was what we see today where a great deal of the ship's historic interiors were gutted and either reused as storage spaces, utility closets, or just plain gutted and abandoned for seemingly no purpose. One of these spaces was the dog kennels. It just didn't seem important enough to preserve this space when they desperately needed an electrical closet. And so it sits today, relatively out of sight and out of mind hidden behind a massive air conditioning unit that was thoughtlessly set on the large exercise area for the dogs. Anybody that comes across this area of the sports deck might never know its significance or learn the unique tales of the furry passengers aboard the historic RMS Queen Mary. Thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and comment below. For more stories on the architecture, engineering, and history of the Steam Age, make sure to subscribe. You can support me by either becoming a Patreon member or channel member, or you can help donate to my transatlantic voyage to the UK. Links and information are in the description below. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.